Thanks for the introduction and good afternoon. My name is Xu Song Zhang. Uh, today I'm going to present our work evaluation of appearance based method and implication for gaze based application. This is the joint work of Max Planck Institute for Informatics, Germany, and also Osaka University, Japan. Uh, please note that uh, different with the last talk that uh, the gaze based application here is a remote gaze, not a uh, head mounted uh, near eye gaze. I believe some of you may know that uh, human eye gaze can be important for the interactive system. We can use human eye gaze as explicit input. For example, we can use eye gaze to tap the words. We can also use eye gaze to play the video game so that you can shoot your enemy by just looking at them. We can also use eye gaze implicitly to model the user visual behavior. For example, we can generate the attention map of the user over the poster or uh, social media. And now assuming that you have a nice idea for your next Kai paper and uh, you want to use, uh, you want to estimate the user eye gaze in the project. And then you will look at the recent Kai paper to find out what people are using nowadays. And you will find that most of the gaze-based application actually using the commercial eye tracker to retrieve the user eye gaze. Let's take the 2B uh, products as an example. Those devices usually have the high-resolution camera and also additional infrared light source. And these device, those devices, of course, can provide you uh, very good uh, gaze estimation accuracy, something around 0 0.5 or to 1 degree gaze estimation error. However, uh, first you need to buy such additional device, and some of them can be very expensive. And more importantly, uh, most of those devices have limited operation distance. It means that you cannot uh, let the user to be far, too, too far or too near to the camera. Therefore, most of, uh, most of the gaze-based application with the commercial eye tracker actually limited themselves to a desktop setting. If you, take, uh, if you read some paper from the computer vision community, you will find another res uh, hot research topic called appearance-based gaze estimation. And this group method uh, can accept the input from a single webcam and process the data with the machine learning techniques and at last they output the 3D gaze direction. Because this group method can work with a single webcam so that uh, it can work not only the desktop setting to estimate uh, the human eye gaze, but it can also work with a longer distance. For example, the public display setting that uh, you have a, a web camera on top of the public display. And uh, on, uh, it can even work with uh, uh, with a uh, head mount uh, side, a head mount device so that uh, uh, to estimate the second person gaze this kind of method can work in real world setting and uh, outdoor environment unfortunately most of the current state of art appearance based gaze estimation heavily rely on the computer vision and machine learning techniques so that it's not uh, accessible or ready for hc applications so in this, paper, in this paper, we propose a software toolkit called OpenGaze to bridge these two domains. Our software toolkit uh, is implementation of current state-of-art appearance-based method, and it can work with a single webcam. It is written in C++. It can run 13 FPS with a modern GPU. It is open source and uh, also available on our website now. And next, I'm going to break down the pipeline of our OpenGaze uh, software. So given an input image from the webcam, a single RGB image, we first do the face and facial landmark detection. And then we crop out the face image according to the detected facial landmark. We feed that uh, face image into a gaze estimation model to, out, uh, to, uh, sorry, to output the 3D gaze direction. And with additional calibration information, we can project this 3D gaze direction to a 2D screen. More specifically, for this uh, face and facial landmark detection part, we use the OpenFace 2.0 library. 
this is uh, uh, open source uh, library and also the state of art uh, its own kind for the facial landmark detection. With the detected facial landmark, we then perform the data normalization. This is one of our previous work. Uh, essentially to say it put a virtual camera at a fixed distance to the face center and also rotate the virtual camera so that it cancel some degree of the head rotation. Visually to see it, uh, it is uh, cancel the head rotation around the row axis and also it output the fixed size of face image regardless of the distance between the user and the camera so that we, have, we can have the robust uh, face image with the fixed uh, size. And then we feed this face image into a uh, case estimation model. And this part is another, uh, another one of our previous work. With the uh, full face image as input, we first pass through it uh, uh, with uh, several convolutional layers, and then we, uh, we use, uh, and then we pass it through the novel special weight mechanism, which uh, efficiently use the f information from the full face image. And at last, it output the gaze direction in the camera coordinate system. For more information, please refer to our previous work. And as I mentioned before, at last, we can project this 3D gaze direction to the 2D screen. Okay, now we have our open gaze toolkit. And next question will be, how does this uh, uh, toolkit compare to the current commercial eye tracker? Because previously there are no such comparison between appearance space method and uh, commercial eye tracker, so that we have to collect our own data set. We show a visual target on the screen and then let the participant looking at the visual target. At the same time, we record their face image with the auto shaft webcam and also we recorded the uh, case estimates out of a com uh, commercial eye tracker, which is Toby RX. In total, we recorded 20 participants and at a different distance from the 180 centimeter to 30 centimeter. For each distance, we recorded uh, 80 samples. For the uh, experiment, we compare uh, three types of method. The first one is the model-based case estimation, which is the case ML published last year, also the current state-of-art uh, model-based method. The second is appearance-based case estimation, which is uh, one of our previous work, also is the implementation inside the, our, the proposed open gaze toolkit. The last one is the commercial eye tracker, which is the Toby X. So next I'm going to show you two of uh, two experiments uh, uh, inside our paper in our paper. The first one will be gaze estimation error across different uh, dis uh, at different distance. And here the x axis is the distance between the user and the camera and the y axis is the gaze estimation error in degree. The lower the better. And please note that for each distance we use uh, 60 samples for the personal calibration and test on the rest of 20 samples. First, I want to show you the performance from the Toby X, which is the commercial eye tracker. As you can see that uh, the Toby can achieve very good, uh, uh, ac uh, very good performance, which is around uh, 0.5 to 1 degree gas estimation uh, accuracy. Uh, however, the operation distance is limited. Uh, the, there are no gates output for a longer distance or for a near distance. The model-based method can output the gates uh, uh, from the user at a different distance, but when it comes to the longer distance, it's become more difficult to detect the pupil and detect iris so that the gaze estimation error become uh, much more worse. In contrast, the appearance-based case estimation, can, um, case estimation method can output the robust uh, performance at a different uh, distance. Although the appearance-based case estimation have uh, uh, a gap between, uh, with the TOBI, which is around two degree case estimation accuracy. 
Uh, please note that for this experiment, we use 60 sample for the personal calibration. And in practice, uh, usually you cannot uh, collect uh, the, so many uh, samples for the personal calibration. So that our next experiment is about how many samples we need for the personal calibration. Here, for this figure, the x-axis is the number of uh, uh, calibration samples we use, and uh, the y-axis still is the case estimation error in degree, the lower the better. And we pick the distance of 75 centimeters because this should be good for the Toby X. And as you can see from the figure, if we just have one calibration sample, it will cause, uh, it will, uh, cause the, the much worse uh, performance. That's because uh, it can cause the overfitting for, the, for all those models. But if we have the, around four or five samples, then we can uh, make the performance to be a reasonable, a reasonable level. And again, the Tobii X achieve the best performance, and the appearance-based method can achieve the uh, comparable result. Okay. So, uh, in summary, that uh, our open gaze toolkit can enable the different new form of uh, gaze-based application. It because it can work with a single webcam. It have a large dis uh, operation at distance between user and camera, and last but not least, answer and animation previously, this uh, toolkit can work with multiple user, and in contrast, the commercial eye tracker can just uh, work with a single user. And that's where we end of my talk. Thanks for your attention, and please enjoy our, do uh, our demo. Okay, any questions? I thought you wanted us to enjoy friends there playing bamboozled, right? What was that thought? Or something like that. So, but the real problem is to actually match it to where people are looking, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so do you have any thoughts on that? You mean the 2D screen part? Well, it doesn't matter really. It could be anywhere in the world, right? Well, the output of the, the toolkit, the uh, raw output actually is uh, 3D gaze direction in a camera coordinate system. So if the target is inside, calibrated inside the camera coordinate system, then you can get the output to, to which target you are looking at. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone? Okay, I had a technical question a bit. On slide 14, I noticed something uh, with the appearance-based method. It looks like the air is actually going down after one meter. Uh, yes, you mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not that significant, but I found it a bit surprising. Do you have any insights on that? Uh, yes, so uh, please note that for this experiment, we use... Uh, 60 samples for collaboration for at each distance. That means for each distance, they have one model. So we train on that distance, test on that distance. That, uh, that is, uh, so, so that has specific model. And another thing is if the user is a little bit far away from the, the display, then the gaze range also is shrinked. So the, uh, the total range is smaller, a little bit smaller, so that uh, the error cannot be that large. Thank you very much, uh, Brian Hall, uh, University of Michigan. Um, uh, so I was wondering um, between, uh, so one of the, I think it may even go to the first question, um, is that each eye has a tendency to look um, differently. And I'm wondering how you handle, do you, uh, do you average them together or do you um, um, basically attempt to find the intersection point where the two gazes go together? Yeah, Thanks. that's a good question. Thanks. So uh, usually the Gaze estimation method is the input is a single eye, and then you have the gaze direction for each eye, and then you intersect them. But for our previous work, this work uh, from CVPR workshop 2017, we take the full face as the input, and then we give, give one gaze direction for that uh, full face.
We have a bit more time, so if you have any, yes, keep asking. Just so do I understand. Um, so yeah, so when you showed those graphs with the with the errors, the angled errors, so those are errors off of a position on the screen, a known position on the screen. No, it's a case estimation error in degree. So yeah, but uh, relative to what? That uh, depends on the distance. So two degree. 50 meter, one meter on the screen, it's different. So that we use degree, not uh, the same. No, no, that part I get. But, yeah. uh, but it's, you're comparing it to a known location on the screen to know what the error is, right? Mm, no, we just uh, compare with the, the 3 degrees direction. And we do not, we did not compare on the screen coordinate. Okay. Yeah. That uh, depends on the distance. Okay, yeah. I'm curious to know if you have thought about um, disponible this tool for cameras from a bio device and what is the implication of that? Uh, for the single webcam application? No, for um, cameras from web de uh, mobile device, smartphones in this case. Currently, this toolkit requires a GPU to run it. Uh, but uh, I know that there are some techniques for compress the network that you can actually run on a, a mobile phone uh, device, a, sim a simple mobile phone device. And if you can have that, as, uh, and then you, uh, I expect that you should have some calibration on the cell phone because it's too small, and then you can actually, I think, you can um, distinguish different region, region which, uh, which part of the user is looking at with our toolkit. That's how it's possible. Okay, I think we can switch gears. Thank you, Shuchuan. Let's thank the